<clears throat> Hello, this, hey, how's it going? This is Resident of Callwood. <laughs> I'm having all sorts of crazy problems this morning. Um, for YouTube, Resident under slash of under slash Callwood for bit shoot. Here to talk about the Alien franchise and the Mar Predator franchise going to Marvel. Is this a shock? No. I mean, let's be honest. Disney owns Marvel. So this isn't a stretch. Is this a good thing? Yes. In some sense it is. I'm curious though about a couple things. Number one, again, you got to look at both sides of this. Marvel is owned by Disney. Disney is a family company. The superhero movies that have come out through Marvel have been great. You know, no doubt. Now, they have elements of horror, but are they anywhere near the level of horror that an alien is or a predator is? No. No, not even close. <clears throat> I do think... My and here's sorry, I'm getting off sort of jumping. My biggest concern with this still is does Disney, you know, whether it's with Marvel Studios or not, honestly, and even with Marvel Studios, do they honestly want to do horror? Do they want to do these characters, or are they just being put in a spot? Okay, they're yours, you get what I'm saying? That. They're basically being handed, handed characters they might not really want. That's my only concern with that. Well, that's one of my concerns. My other concern... What's your plot... Con what, where are you going with these franchises now? Okay? Ridley Scott... You know, it's been reported by certain news sites, and I don't know how true this is. Maybe it's true, maybe it isn't. That Ridley Scott wants to continue the prequels. Now, would I mind that? I guess I wouldn't. Do I want that? No, and I'll explain why here in a second. Ridley Scott wants to continue to do the prequels that lead up to the original Alien. Okay, if you're not from... Which, the two prequels that are out there now, and you can get them on DVD, Prometheus, which is really, really, really good, and Alien Covenant, which is, it's okay. It's pretty good. But my biggest continuity error with, and this is sort of where I'm going to lead into this, with Alien Covenant, by the end of Prometheus, Elizabeth Moss... Uh, or, or whatever her character's name was. I don't know. I'm... The girl at the end of one, her husband <clears throat> gets, impre gets an alien embryo uh, put into him by drinking. Uh, David puts an alien embryo in his drink, and he drinks it without knowing. Well, the girl at the end of one figures that out when David when they're trying to figure out, when she's trying to figure out how the hell it happened, and he sort of looks at her, and she looks at him, and she's sort of like, oh, you son of a bitch. Like, she's looking at him that way. And David says something into that has always bothered me. He goes, oh, she forgave me and put me back together. I'm thinking, this woman whose husband you basically murdered... <laughs> forgive you and put you back together maybe she forgave him but trust him no there's there's a difference between forgiveness and trust forgiving somebody is okay I forgive you for doing that but as far as trust no you no there's just a big gap between those two and I can't honestly see her putting him back together I don't know how he got back together I guess I have to believe him because she's dead um, they basically killed her character off at least <clears throat> at least that's what it looked like in Covenant 
So do I want them to continue the prequels? No. Should they reboot the franchise? Again, if they reboot it or just remake the original, that's just leading up to that. You, then you might as well do the prequels. If you're going to lead up to that, then just... Another thing, too, that I don't want to see with Alien, and this had been getting kicked around, and this started with uh, basically Alien 5. Alien 5's concept, whether people realize it or not, was coming from a fucking video game. And that's what bothered me most about it when I read the plot synopsis. <clears throat> Ripley was, and the guy from uh, part two who we thought died in Alien 3, <clears throat> were coming back. Michael Bayheim character were coming back okay and he would have an acid sort of scar on his face well here's the here here's the issue with that if that sounds familiar to you it's because Michael Bain's character that story exists in a video game now the only difference is there's no Ellen Ripley or you don't really you don't see Ellen Ripley's character she's not around he's searching for her and the colonial marines are, are fighting off aliens Wayland Utani soldiers etc 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 so basically there's like a there's sort of like a civil war going on within alien colonial marines between the colonial marines and between Wayland Utani so, do I think you could do that? Again, I don't want to take a story from a video game and just use it. I think that would be cheap. And so, for me, it, to go the way of a video game, and I, I'm going to add this point before I make my complete point. They were also, there was talks of them taking another, a video game character, and using her as a movie character, Amanda Ripley. Now, for those who've played Alien Isolation, you know who Amanda Ripley is. For those who haven't, Amanda Ripley is the daughter of Ellen Ripley, and Amanda Ripley's been looking for her mother for 15 years, and, well, this, it takes, Alien Isolation, sorry, she hasn't been looking for her. Alien Isolation takes place 15 years after the original. So, she's been looking for... She's been working for Leyland Utah. <laughs> you guessed it. And... As a mechanic, of all things. Um, and... She gets aboard the ship, which has been taken over by an alien, obviously. And you have to survive alien isolation. You're alone with the alien. You can't kill the alien. Which uh, The game is great, by the way. Um, again, you're taking a video game character, which has some dialogue, be, and you do get to see through cut scenes. But again, to take a video game character or concept and add it and try to place it into a movie, I think is just asinine and stupid. And you got to remember, this thing starts off as a movie franchise. The movie franchise spawned the video game franchise. You then, therefore, do not want the video game franchise. The video game characters or video game plot synapses to become a part of your movie franchise because that means you're not really being original with your plot synapses you're basically just using the video games plot synapses it's it's a lot of the reason we hear about you know video games <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. It's a lot of reason we hear video games 
don't make good movies. It's because the Hollywood doesn't understand the full core plot synopsis of the video game. Like this, there's all this here, and you're missing this. Some are really good, and some some aren't. Um, like Sonic was amazing. You know what I mean? You. But again, you don't. Sonic started off as a video game franchise. You don't want to take a franchise that's a movie franchise and use it as and take your video game series that has spawned off of that and just say, oh, let's let's throw it in there. No, I, I hope not. What do I think we could see? Now, I know a lot of people are going to say retcon because of how, how successful Halloween 2018 was. Where would you retcon from? You know, that's, that's the question. I wouldn't retcon from one, again, because that would just be insane. Now, here's the thing. I like most of the Alien films. I like one, two, three. I like, even if three gets a lot of hate... Resurrection's okay, but again, it's not the greatest continuity wise storyline. <laughs> I like I like both the prequels in a sense, but again, Alien Covenant sort of just left a sour taste in my mouth. Good movie from a action standpoint and just a suspense standpoint. So what could they do? If you're going to retcon, I guess I would retcon after two, you know. The the only difference is you need to say something different about Ellen Ripley. Would Sigourney Weaver return? I think so. She's returned many, many times in this franchise, and it's not like... I don't think... Here's the difference. There's a difference between... Sig People are going to get mad at me for saying this. There's a difference between Sigourney Weaver, who honestly wants to be a part of the, uh, the Alien franchise, and has been. There's a difference between her and Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, she did a show for the money. Um, she didn't want to come back. She didn't want to stick around. You know, she was done. You know, with resurrection and stuff, and she did the like the opening, and her character got killed off. Look, she chose to be killed off. On the other hand, you have Alan Ripley, played by Sigourney Weaver, who has openly embraced her franchise, and I think that's the biggest difference. That's why I've always appreciated Sigourney Weaver a lot more than I have Jamie Lee Curtis. Sigourney Weaver has embraced the franchise in many ways so do i think they could get her back absolutely and i think you know sigourney weaver is someone to me who would appeal to an audience if you tell a story around her character ellen ripley but here's the thing a push comes to shove whatever if you're honestly going to retcon this franchise and do one last movie with ellen ripley you this needs to be it you know, this here. And what would I say? Well, instead of an alien egg being put on the ship and obviously a face sucker, there's got to be more alien planets out there. So that's what that would be to me. There's more alien planets out there. There's not just that one. Come on. You think that's the only one? No, I don't. There's probably more. <sighs> and probably Waylon Yutani knows there's more. What would I do? I would start this movie off with Sigourney Weaver sitting in a, a room. She's in all white. And you see these laser bars. And she's just sitting there. And here she's in this men mental institution. Basically, what would happen is Waylon Utani. <laughs> that's are going off here. Waylon Utani has covered up anything involving the 
the alien. And that's not a stretch if you've seen the first two films. Obviously, we know in, in, the, in Alien 1, the crew was expendable. In Alien 2, the Colonial Marines were fucking expendable. Wayland yutani wants the alien alive. So, when she comes... This starts not in space, on Earth. Well, it would... And it would explain that she gets... She got rescued by a Wayland yutani crew. Just like, sort of, she did in two. But the only difference is, they put her in a mental hospital. They, they... Hey, there is no alien. There, there no, there's no proof of this, and that's sort of something they did a little, did a bit in too. That they were questioning her mental status, <laughs> and so again, this would not be a stretch. Lo and behold, Wayland Utani, do they have an alien on Earth? I think that's got to be the biggest, whatever. If you had an alien on Earth, you've defeated the purpose of the movie. So there's got to be, again, other alien planets where there's aliens. Lo and behold, what we see from the Wayland yutani side is actual, the only documentation is in with the Wayland Utani, the head of Wayland Utani. Who would I make the head of Wayland Utani? Now we've seen the Wayland, right? We, and the one thing I'll give we've seen Wayland. We have not seen Utani. And who would I cast to sort of you know we have not had a good female antagonist in these movies really too much a bit a little bit at times sometimes but not a really good one and who would i cast for a, a Wayland yutani i can't think of the actress name i know she's just, uh japanese but i would literally pick somebody who <sighs> Again, I can't think of her name, but cast a female antagonist, and what you would see is there are actually three other planets that are inhabited by aliens. But again, Wayland Utani wants an alien alive. The problem with that is. The aliens, think about how violent the xenomorphs are and violent the aliens are. So it's hard for them to just go on these planets and just go get an alien. So to disguise their bullshit, Wayland Utani would start a war with a, another outer space shipping company there would be sort of like a shipping war going on instead of a civil war is what i would do and ba basically bullets lasers are traded shots back and forth because these three ships would fall under the other space uh companies shipping line is what i would do so this becomes a literal war and in between the war you have Wayland yutani trying to get on those planets they're using the war as a guise to get near the planets and someone on them they're they're looking for an excuse to have soldiers near the planets so people can't just report them because now in the future you can't just have space be all about Wayland yutani everybody's got to be a part of outer space for the alien franchise i know this is going on long and i got predator to talk about too so that would be the guise of alien alien has to really be about outer space as well yes you can have a ellen ripley be in a mental institution for somewhat of this uh for some of this but eventually
what the other side starts to suspect is, okay, why did they start this war with us? Somebody who's high up on the other side of the the other shipping company starts to question, okay, Waylon Utani started this with us. Why? You know, we weren't, you know, it's not like there's a, a, a trade restriction. So they're just like, why is this going even going on? And so they sneak their own crew down there. And they watch the Wayland Utani soldiers be just slaughtered by the Xenomorphs. <laughs> and only one of their crew escapes this shit. And he, whoever this is, whether it's a guy or, I would have it be a guy. And he's like, they're real, they're real. What's real? The, the, the aliens, that girl, they, there's, you know, they're talking about, because in the headlines it would read, you know, Ellen Ripley claims alien life. She's dubbed crazy by Waylon And everyone believes Waylon Utani. So they're saying she was right. She was right. They plan to bust her out of the net. So again, there's a war going on. They sneak into Earth and break her out of this mental institution. You got to help us. Help you with what? You you know you know <laughs> there's so they want Ellen to help them rid the alien rid get rid of the aliens but again there's a war going on too I think you could pull something like this off again we'll see what they honestly do with Alien and now I gotta talk Predator Predator th this is gonna be real simple. <laughs> Number one, do not combine Alien or Predator ever again. I think, I don't know which side didn't want nothing to do with the other, but I really think somebody in the Alien franchise did not want Predator to be a part of their franchise. And you know what? Fine. Keep them separate. Don't have them be together. Now, should they sequel The Predator? No. No. No, I think the Predator, there's good moments in it, but it's not a good overall film worthy enough to have a sequel. Should Predator be a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Now, here's the thing with that. That would make sense considering they're bounty hunters, and Predator is a trophy hunter. Mind you, DC has a bounty hunter named Lobo. And Lobo is this foul mouth alien that has a lot of tech. And he loves his money in tech. He, he gets the money to buy the tech. And he loves doing it. If Lobo would have to blow up a planet to collect his bounty... Fuck it. He would do it. He'd fucking flip the switch and there'd go the planet. He would not give two shits. <clears throat> so could Predator be the equivalent of their Lobo in a sense? The, pre the Predator species? My only issue with that, with that would be... Who are you... Predator could not just target one side. If we're talking honestly a trophy hunter... Predators targeting everybody. So this wouldn't just be a antagonist protagonist. Predator is what Predator always has been, a neutral character. There's are there elements of horror in Predator? Absolutely. But for me, Predator has never been an antagonist or a protagonist. Predator is out for one thing, itself. It's a self selfish character and again same thing with Lobo selfish character he's not necessarily bad or good he just doesn't give a shit so I, I can't say that's Predator if Predator does, at times I think Predator doesn't give a shit the way they portray it do I want Predator to be a part of the Marvel Universe no because I just think that would convolute things and Again, 
I don't think they would know how to really use the character properly with throughout that universe. I don't. I, I think there would be there would be problems. <laughs> so Predator I don't want Predator a part of that. I want Predator to be go back to what it was. Its own thing. Its own franchise, its own integrity, all of it. Now, how do you do that? Do you reboot the franchise? In a weird way, you, there are stories you could tell. Now, there are really good comic book stories for The Predator. And that's someplace I would really start scratching at if I'm, if I'm Marvel. I mean, you're Marvel Comics, right? You're Marvel Studios. You know that... A lot of your core characters from Marvel came from comics. And there are honestly good stories that out there in the comics that are really good that could be used for stories that, again, some people might say, well, you, you, mind, you would mind if they did a video game but not comics. No, I wouldn't mind if they did a comics because comics do have good story and good illustration and they come across very easily from a movie standpoint too take a look at marvel studios and what they've done um again core example and that's who we're talking about here too is marvel studios do i think they'll do that i don't know i don't know i think if you honestly reboot this franchise and remake it again you're remaking one of the best action movies ever um in the original predator i don't want to sit here and retcon the shit out of everything some people might say that would be the easiest solution to just retcon and go off a of two it probably would be again i think predator my hope is that they do something really cool with both these characters. That these characters aren't just being dumped on a studio that doesn't want them. What would I like to see done with Predator? I would love for them to tell the story of... Remember in Predator 2 when the Predator hands Danny Glover a western gun? I would love that, that story to be told tell that that's actually in the comics and i think they could pull that story off easily especially Disney, like marvel studios a western story wrapped around horror with predator again predator's been doing this for years and years and years and that's something you could preference with one film and how long this has really been going on and then move forward somehow so I wouldn't mind them going back a bit and do that. Again, we time will tell. But do I think they should retcon the first two? Yeah, pretty much. I think that, again, remake and reboot, you would just... You're trying to top an original that I don't think is going to be topped. With a retcon, you could just go off of two. And, you know, I know there are people out there that don't like Predator 2. I love Predator 2, so... Who would I cast to go... What would my story be for Predator, the third Predator movie, if they do this retcon? You know, what I... Predator starts off in space and comes to Earth to hunt, right? <clears throat> the one thing I would do is... Have a have the predator land. Look what's going on now, COVID, right, and all the all this other stuff, the rioting and stuff. I would put I would set predator in the heart of Colombia, the Colombian jungle, and just go from there and have predator there's all these there's all these you know 
dirty stuff going down in Columbia with drugs, the army, and all that stuff. And try to do a story somewhat like that. Again, it's so hard to think of Predator because, again, trophy hunter, right? You're wanting to do something that makes sense. The one thing I think Predator needs to do no matter what is whatever they do with these two franchises, stay the course, you know, don't knee jerk reaction to anything because I think that's was the biggest problem at Fox it really with the, both these franchises. A lot of just look at the Predator, the Predator could have been a really great movie and should have been. And it just wasn't because of the studio just fucking hacking it to pieces. And that happens, unfortunately. But I really just want these two franchises to be successful again. If Ridley Scott's involved with Alien, if that's really the case, then we'll, it's in good hands. I think Ridley Scott... If he, again, if he's a part of it, then that's fine. I have no problem there. Predator. I can't even think of who you would attach with a Predator right now. From a just a writing standpoint or a, or a director standpoint. But would I bring Shane Black back? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what do you want to come back <laughs> again and that's the thing too predator predator has had one consistent problem with its movies you know people where people shit on predator 2 oh there's no arnold well here's a news flash for you arnold didn't want to do predator 2 he didn't want to come back to do predator 2 he was too he wasn't returning their phone calls at the time he was too busy doing kindergarten fucking cop okay there's a little fact for you <laughs> so <laughs> he didn't want to do predator 2 just like he didn't want to return for the predator and even danny glover was rumored for the predator and that didn't happen so predator has had problems bringing their their characters back because of star power so, who would I cast to go up against the Predator? Oh, easily. Well, uh, Wyatt Russell, Kurt's son. I think he would do just fine as an action star. Look at, there was a movie he was in um, that I watched that he was in. It was really good. But, I forgot the name of it now because I'm absent-minded. But I think I would cast him to go up against the Predator. Um, we'll see what they do and how they do it. I'm, if they made Predator part of the Marvel Universe, would I be mad? No, not mad. But again, I, I'd love to see how exactly, not how you would do that, but how does the Predator's trophy hunting in the Marvel Universe, if it were to happen, how does it affect everybody? You know what I'm saying? That's something you, you would need to do. Because, again, Predator is not about one side or the other. Predator is about itself. It's not about good or bad. It's not about getting paid for the trophies. It, it's not looking to, It's not Lobo. It's not looking to collect money for its fucking trophies, you know what I'm saying, it's doing it for the fucking pride of it, I'm this great fucking hunter, <laughs> right, so, that's my overall insight of this, um, I know it was long, 30 some odd minutes, god, hope you guys enjoyed this video, um, let me hear your thoughts on this, what do you want to see, and how do you feel about Alien and Predator being part of Marvel now? Like, share, comment, subscribe.